Hi everyone, it's Karen Baker here with some more ideas for the Tonic Craft Kits and we are up to Craft Kit 29 and there are some gorgeous pastel spring-like colourways and if you want to see everything that is in the kit do check out on YouTube uh, Tonic's unboxing videos and there are quite other quite a number of other bloggers who also do unboxing so I'm not going to do unboxing this is going to be a shortish video and I'm just going to show you one idea using the um, system that is in the kit in a slightly different way now each kit we get you always have your dies and your stamps and that's what I am focusing on for this video. <clears throat> Hopefully you can see all of the dyes, beautiful, floral, dragonflies, butterflies, so much that you could do with them. And you might have noticed that all of them have got these little dots all around them. Now this is for um, the dot and drop technique, which is perfect for using with Nouveau. Uh, let me just get them here, here you go. So the Nouveau drops, and in the kit you get three, which I did have three, oh there it is, one's rolled off. And the treat for you all this time is that you get three full sized bottles, one of the glitter ones, one of the vintage ones, and one of the crystal drops. And you can see the colors and check that out in other videos. But the idea is that the dots in the dies actually pierce through the cardstock and so because they pierce through it means that it gives the perfect template for you adding your Nouveau drops. If you've ever struggled to think how do I put them, how do I get enough, you know, equal distance between all of the drops, this is the answer to that problem. So you obviously could just leave the dots as they are, they provide a really lovely textural effect. You can see if I bring this up to the camera here you can see there you've got lovely, lovely uh, dots, but you can use them for putting your drops on. But what I'm going to show you today is a really easy way of stitching and faux stitching for those of you who haven't got time or don't like stitching. It is easy enough for a beginner to do, and I'm going to show you how to make this card. If I bring it up closely, hopefully you'll be able to see that there is stitching and there is also faux stitching. It's really easy to do and I'm going to show you how to do it. So let me just get everything ready and let's make. So to get started you need to die cut the butterflies and to do that we're using this one here and then we are also going to be using these two inner parts which actually go with this one here. So what you end up with is the butterfly. Obviously you don't need to use the inner parts if you don't want to but the inner um, die are actually going to give you the little pierced parts. And the same for this one, you've got piercings all the way around the outside. Now, I appreciate some of you are not gonna want to be doing any sewing, and that's fine. So I'm gonna show you the faux sewing in a minute, but to start off, um, I'm just going to show you how simple it is. If you've never sewn, this is the perfect place to start. Now, if I bring this up here, you will be able to see uh, the pierced bits quite easily. Now, if you've got small enough needles, they should go in. If you're wanting to make them a little bit bigger, quite often I tend to just push it through with the needle, but if you don't want to do that, um, by all means get your piercing tool, here's a Tim Holtz tonic um, piercing tool, and just pop this like this, hold it, and sort of wiggle it in, and that will give you a slightly larger hole to pop your needle and thread. Now the sorts of thread that I'm using are just very simple thread that you would use on your machine. This is just some gorgeous uh, Gutmann thread, which I use a lot of, but you can use embroidery um, thread that you might have, silk threads, anything for cross stitch, just take a couple of skeins, probably one or two would be, um, thread wise would be enough. Um, and you know, you can have multicolor, whatever you want to do. Obviously it will depend on how thick it is because you've got to get it through these holes. So to start off with, just a little needle, don't be afraid of sewing. It literally is just in and out of a hole in a straight line. You can see here, I've got a little knot in the end. What you can do as well, if you start 
in the middle here and you stick to one colour. If I just pop my needle in and bring it out, if you're not big on doing dot, um, doing knots, what you could do is just get a little bit of tape or a bit of washi tape and actually stick the end down. And what that will mean is you know that it's really secure. So if you're a bit heavy handed and um, you're not very good at threading um, and you wanna keep it all in one place, then just do that. So very, very simple. Once you've got your thread down, you're just going to put it through the next hole. It's a bit like those laces that you used to have with shapes when you're probably at nursery school. Now, if you're gonna do a back stitch and you're gonna cover all of the holes, what you would do is you would come up through the hole. So sometimes you might find it easier to turn it over. So I'm just putting it through the next hole. And just check the back that you've taken it all the way through and put it down the one that you've just um, got the other end of the thread in. So you're gonna end up covering all of the space. So again, I've just used that hole, so I'm gonna go to this hole here. Again, pop it through. Check that there are no sort of knots on the back and then put it through the one before. And that's what you would do over and over again. All the way around as far or as many I mean what you could do if you don't want to do that and you want to do something even easier just put it let me just check what I'm doing I'm trying to look at the screen as well to check it's in um, focus so that's why I'm sort of looking like I really don't know what I'm doing what you could do is go one forward like you did before but then you could just go down to the next one so what you could end up with is a little gap so if you wanted to do that then you just go ahead just how we showed you in the first bit and then go on to the next one so you know you, there's all sorts of things you can do you can see the different effects you can get there but if sewing is not for you and if the thought of picking up a needle and thread makes your blood run cold then try the faux sewing so if I just pop my needle away so I don't stab myself with it what I've tended to do you probably uh, see if you can see the distance the difference between them. This one here I've just gone through with different colour threads so I've just started and um, tied it off with a knot and then started a new colour and gone all the way around which gives a really really pretty effect. But here's what I have done with a pen as well. Now if you get up really close you are going to see a difference but from you know the average person who's looking at your card is probably not going to notice because the little piercings give a really good um, effect and it does look like you've actually stitched. So all I did was I just got some ordinary um, markers either fine tip markers or biros um, because you're going to need to be able to go um, it needs to be less than the width of the actual dots. So that's why I've used these and not my normal Nouveau um, colouring products. So all you would do is just go, just go in and you're just tracing the gaps between. Doesn't matter if you go down the dot, just keep following it all the way around and you get a really lovely faux stitched um, effect. So that's how we do the basic bit. So let me just take those out of the way. Now the cardstock that I've used, the colors are these ones here. So I've used three colors. I have used ocean blue, fuchsia pink, and navy blue, which are a really nice color combo. So all I've done is I've created uh, my base card out of white and I've stuck the fuchsia pink on and then I've cut out a slightly smaller layer out of the navy blue. You can see I've already started what I'm about to do next. And then you're gonna get one of your dies. I love this trail. I mean, this could be used for so many different things and I've just die cut that onto my piece of cardstock. Now, all I need to do is do the stitching. Now, the great news is again, for those of you who don't love sewing, this is not sewn. This is actually faux stitching, which unless you're really close, it does look like the real thing. So it's a great cheat. Um, I've just used one of my favorite um, crafting products, a gel pen. So all we're gonna do, 
try not to get my head in view, um, is we're just going in between exactly what we were doing before. So we're just, it's like dot to dot. So you're just tracing in between. So just take it in between. Sometimes it looks a little bit more realistic if you stop slightly before the dot. And if they are not absolutely perfect, that looks far more realistic as well. So if you go slightly off, do not worry. It just looks like the stitching. So you don't need to try and be too careful. So there you go, all the way around. We've done our stitching. Now we just compile the card. I did say it would be a nice and easy one. So we'll just glue them together. There we go. With my Deluxe Adhesive, which is my go-to glue for most of my projects. You can get that in the Tonic store. So we just pop that on like that, just make sure it is centered. That's why I love the wet glues because it does give you a bit of time to just adjust your um, cardstock or whatever else you're sticking down and make sure that you've got it in place. So there I've got my basic bit of the card. Now the sentiment, I use some of the stamps from the kit. Let me see if I can get a piece of paper so you can see. So you can see our stamps there. I just use the special friend. So I stamped it on the ocean blue um, with our um, embossable ink and then I just put some white embossing powder and then heated it to set. Um, you can find tutorials about how to do this if you look for heat embossing if you've never done this before but it is really really easy. So all I'm going to do now is decide where I'm going to put it. So this is where when you're designing things it's always good to have a little play and work out exactly where you want it. I think about that would be great. So again I'm just going to pop some more glue on. You could put this on foam pads. I'm just doing it uh, fairly low profile so that it's cheaper to send through the post because I'm a bit tight like that. And just pop that onto the card. Make sure it's straight and then just trim off the edges. But don't do it like that. You know, I was trying to do it quickly without watching what I was doing. Try and do it straight. And guess what? That one isn't straight either. Just trim. Here's a tip. Do it before you put it on the cards. <laughs> Don't mess it up like me. So there's my sentiment. And then all I need to do is just pop my uh, butterflies on. Now, I found it slightly easier just to do the outer bit first, but you might find it the other way around. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the middles and then just position it. Now, you are going to need to leave it to dry because obviously it's not being on the card flat so just watch that so don't send it straight away otherwise you'll find that it's sort of disappeared off onto another part of the card by the time the recipient gets it so again I folded these little bits up from the edge so we're going to leave that to dry but there we go that is your basic card now obviously I've not done anything else I've not put any of the drops, these would look really lovely with a couple of the vintage drops. So I think actually I might put a few of those on. After all, that's what the set was designed for. You can just take that off. Let's just put a couple of little dots on. And again, use dots of different um, sizes. So if you want a larger dot, obviously squeeze for a little bit longer and tiny drops, tiny bit of pressure. So there we go, that is my card completed. Uh, nice and easy, um, there are so many other things, but I just wanted to show you how to use the dot and drop effect dies in a different way, so that you've got a few more choices when you're coming to use your craft kit 29. Obviously, there have been lots and lots of other lovely videos and inspirations, and we cannot wait to see how you have used your craft kit. Don't forget to tag Tonic on any of the social media channels. Um, if you haven't joined our Tonic Facebook group, please do that. 
we love getting to know you on the Facebook group there. So until my next video, I shall say goodbye and see you soon.